after the death of her grandfather, Phoebe and her family move out to his dirt farm in the middle of nowhere. And after a certain amount of time, it becomes quite apparent that their grandfather hides some secrets in the Ghostbuster variety. Hello everybody, my name is Josh the Movie Apprentice and today I am looking at Ghostbusters Afterlife. And if the original Ghostbusters was lightning in a bottle, then Ghostbusters Afterlife definitely carries some secondhand static off that original. This is easily the best Ghostbusters movie since the first one. Though while I say it is the second best Ghostbusters movie, it is not without its problems. And I shall go into these problems pretty much straight away. The first thing I'll point out is how it fails in all aspects of comedy. There is a lot of comedic elements that are played off like on the nose, we know it's bad comedy. But there are other moments where it tries to be straight with its comedy. And I did not laugh. On either side of the fence. I did get a couple laughs towards the end. From a different source. That I will not spoil. But yeah for the most part. The comedy in this movie. Generally failed in all aspects. Also some of the characters in this. Are just dead weight. There are characters in this. That feel like they're just there. To make up the numbers. And fill out the roles of the original cast. Finn Wolfhard's character for one. Apart from being a good engineer with the car, he doesn't really add too much to the story. And his love interest in this one, if you could even call her that, she is just there to make up the numbers. There is nothing about her character. There is no real development with this character. They very much feel like a spare part. And there are times they just completely disappear from the movie and then reappear just to make up the numbers. There was a character in this called Podcast, a little boy, and this character will work for some people and not work for others. He did reek of trying to appeal to the younger audience by naming this kid Podcast, and all he wants to talk about is his podcast and how he likes to dive in to the paranormal and the supernatural. But he did work for me, and in fact was actually one of the strongest elements of this for me alongside Phoebe who is our lead character in this and the primary driving force. The film is very much approached in a similar way to Doctor Sleep where it tells its own story for the majority of the film with some references and nods to the original that came before it before going absolutely ham on the nostalgia and the fan service for the last half hour to 40 minutes. That is the approach of this movie. So I can see why some people are saying this film relies way too much on nostalgia. But for me personally, I feel like it executed it in the best way possible. Going back to my negatives though, I feel like the film does waste Paul Rudd quite considerably. There are a couple of relationships that he forms in this film. And a couple of scenes get built up and then just dropped off straight away. Which was unfortunate and he doesn't really play a huge role getting towards the tail end of the film especially as in all the promotional footage and posters he is front and center he is very much a side character so don't let the promotion fool you on that regard this also falls into the sequel trap of basically using a lot of elements from the original and just adding a new layer of paint over the top and chucking in a few extra elements and this generally is something that really derails a lot of the worst sequels ever made and this film was in danger of repeating that mistake but it tells it in a different enough way that these copy and paste elements can be forgiven. So why do I say this is the second best Ghostbuster movie when I have basically pointed out a lot of my problems with it straight away? Where it fails in the comedy department it makes up for in the heart and reminds you of what the Ghostbusters franchise is. This focuses on the heart and that is where this film shines the strongest. The mystery and slow build up for the first half of the movie is really well done. You could actually for the first I would say 60 to 65 percent of the movie watch this movie without having to have needed to watch the original, the amount of references that are revealed in that first 65% are mostly little nods and references, but they're not 
essential, if that makes sense. It very much feels like the original Ghostbusters would act as a prequel that comes out after this movie for that first 65%. But once we get past a certain point, the strength of this film standing on its own falls apart as we do get into some heavy fan service elements that I will not spoil. But as someone that really enjoys the original Ghostbusters and isn't a hardcore fan, I absolutely love every moment of it. Some parts of the nostalgia towards the end gets a bit spotlight stealing at times, but doesn't detract overall from the next generation coming through. Phoebe is a fantastic lead protagonist played by McKenna Grace, does a very good job of just portraying this emotionless, awkward child, and yet manages to demonstrate an emotional range through a very subtle performance. And I really enjoyed Carrie Coon as the mum as well. You could buy into her motivations and her views on her father, who is the late grandfather that passed away that I mentioned at the start of the video. And I will have to say I did tear up at the end for the Howard Ramis tribute. It is beautifully executed and is the best use of what is a very controversial trend that Hollywood has been doing over the last few years. The ghost designs look good, especially the new ones. Unfortunately, we don't get enough of the actual ghosts. It's a lot of repeats from the original. Though I do love how it felt like they were trying to mix up some practical and some CG elements and mixing them together. Podcast's little podcast arc as well, I will say, has a very sweet, wholesome little payoff towards the end that just made a hell of a lot of sense and I truly bought it. The film does end quite suddenly and there are a couple of credit stingers, the first one being more for comedy and nostalgia. The second one, laying a seed, but I implore the studio to let Ghostbusters rest in the afterlife. The title Ghostbusters Afterlife is very much a fitting title for this movie and the way it ends, I just feel it's a nice way to send this franchise off. It felt like the closing of a book. And if there is another one out in the future, I probably won't see it because I would love for this just to be the definitive finale. Then again, I do review movies, so I'll probably have to watch it at some point. Before I get into my grave, do like what I do on the channel, consider clicking the like button, subscribing for more content that is coming all the time. And comment below what you think of Ghostbusters Afterlife and what would you rank? the four Ghostbusters movies. So Ghostbusters Afterlife leans very heavily into nostalgia. The comedy does not work in any way, shape or form. And a lot of characters do feel like dead weight. When it comes to our main characters that the film focuses on and the very slow build up to the Ghostbusters shenanigans and the mystery around it and just the Howard Ramis tribute, they tick a lot of boxes for me and really save this film from being another train wreck in the franchise. So overall, I'm going to have to say that for me, Ghostbusters Afterlife is an okay cup of tea. <laughs> Ghostbusters Afterlife, have you seen it? If you have, let me know you thought in the comments below. Coming up on the channel, well, we have Tick Tick Boom to review. We also have, hopefully, a video essay over the next week, if I can find the time to edit it. I've got a big end of year project, which is where I come to you, my few viewers. Give me a line from a movie this year that has stuck with you to put into my end of year project. I promise you it will be used very wisely. But until next time, my name is Josh. I have been your movie apprentice. I'll see you next time.